Uh, it's Monday, January 25th, 2021. I'd like to open the meeting of the Douglas Conservation Commission 19 at uh, 7.06 p.m. Uh, first item of business on the agenda is the meeting minutes. Uh, as I understand, the outstanding meeting minutes were from uh, November. Uh -huh that art wasn't available i was going to review those i did not get a chance to review those those months so i'm not ready to sign off on november did katie we grace did you, did you want to do a roll call oh my goodness absolutely thank you um yeah, let's do a roll call for for uh, attendees from the conservation commission uh this is katie dudley i hi Greco. hi Eric Harris, aye. Mark Mungum, aye. Thank you. All right. Um, did we have another set of meeting minutes come out since then? There should be two in this chair drive that are not approved. Um, we have December 7th. And December yeah. 7th. So I don't know if anybody took a look at the November meet, um, anybody else took a look and if they had any problems with the November minutes. I no, I still. No problem. Did you look at them? Did you get a chance to look at them? Some of them. Okay. The one, uh, I'm trying to get the list up here, hold on. Well, fine. Um, well, I can't find it here, but the one, uh, hold on. The one art mentioned, I did look at, and, and I had no problem with it. November? Uh, yeah, November something. I can't find the damn list here. November 2nd. 20th. Oh, oh November 20th. No, 2nd. You're right. Sorry. Okay. I was going to say, I only have the 2nd. I don't have a 20. I don't think we met a 2nd time mm -hmm. in November because of the holiday. So do you want to put that one aside if nobody else has reviewed it? I would like to put it aside personally. Okay. Um, I would like to know if anyone's gotten a chance to look at the uh, meeting from December 7th. Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, as I stated last meeting, I, I, I still think the times need to be put in there. Um, and other than that, it looks like uh, it looks like a pretty good. It's a seven-page document. Um, it's a little more wordy than normal, but somebody did a pretty good job. So um, I don't really have any changes to make other than putting the times instead of seven o'clock for everything. You want to put okay because it does give the times during the meeting. Yeah, like it gives the, seventeen the, twenty twenty the times, thirty-three. The timestamps aren't correct. Well, they're probably based on the YouTube video, well, the it's recording. Not, it's, it's not correct. Oh, okay. They weren't correct on the ones I corrected last a couple months ago. Okay. Um, they, they're four or five minutes off on everything, but um, you know, like the you know the the one at eight fifty is number nine, item nine, and they've got an hour forty seven minutes into the meeting. Um, I don't know where it picks it up and loses it, but some of them are four or five minutes off, and it's just okay. it's just about, it's just about you know being accurate. But we it, 
whoever the future minute taker is, I don't know if we have a minute taker yet. Um, I hear the, the last lady isn't going to be doing it anymore. But Ashley, yeah. Uh, yeah, Ashley. I think we we would want to impress upon whoever takes it up in the future that um, that's the proper way to do it. I, I know it's easy to just put a timestamp on there, but that that doesn't necessarily make it right. Okay. All right. So we'll hold off on those ones as as well. Um, with being said that we'd like to see updates for the timestamps. Did you find anything else that you thought was like inaccurate in the uh, December minutes? Yeah. The um, we had stopped to take up the calendar for 2021 and yep. they put it at the end which isn't in the right spot and I was going to cut and paste again but I I didn't because they added a notation that this isn't in the right spot like so if if someone in the future from the public looks at it they'll be able to tell at least um again it needs a timestamp on it but um but at least they noted that it, it's it's misplaced this time it, okay. would, it ended up on the last page on the discussion points, but we took it up like the second or third thing we did. So, but okay. other than that, there weren't any other errors that I, I noted. All right. Thank you, Art. Thanks, Art. Yep, no problem. All right. So with that, um, not approving any minutes tonight. We'll go on to the next item for discussion. Do we want to talk to 130 Southeast Main minor plan change? Sure. Um, do you want to, um, back to Art's point, every time you go to another agenda item, because I think there might be some miscommunications between the YouTube link and time. So you could just tell, if you have a clock on you. Yeah, I, I have a little bit on my computer. Our, back to Art's point. You could say every time you start a new agenda item, you could save the time. Yeah, okay. it's, seven, it's seven fourteen. Say you know, and um, yeah. uh, they'll pick it up on the recording. So when they type it up, they'll be able to put that in. Okay. Well, I think do, that's that's fine with me. Do we have anybody, right. Steve, to do the typing? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Go back to I'm not. I'm not volunteering. <laughs> But back to your point, Mark, you, uh, you had a great point. So this would help anyone in the future. Uh, yep, that's the whole idea. So yeah, Katie, right. we can go to item two. All right, yeah, that being said, item two, uh, it's 7.14 p.m. And we're going to talk about 130 Southeast Main Street Minor Plan Change, EP number 1430925. Uh, see if I can find that in the Zoom folder. Yep, so this was on last week. They asked for an extension uh, of the order last week, and then they had some, uh, they wanted to modify the house a little bit. And so we asked that they come back with their engineer and kind of give some detailed information on that. So let me see if I can screen share my, if I can learn how to do this. Mm -hmm. Is the plan on the screen? Yes. It is now. It is. Oh, wow. So, uh, this is uh, the this, the Both houses here are going to be on. Is, is this is the next one? Is the uh, item number three? So, this right here is with this red house is 130 Southeast Main. And this is 134 Southeast Mains. There's a common driveway that kind of comes through. Um, and just to set it up a couple of years ago, 134 came in for a certificate of compliance, but the commission denied it because there was a this driveway was roughed in. And so until this was completed, they wanted to wait on get granting the certificate of compliance on 134. They're gonna be in later the next item to ask for a continuation until this little section of driveway is completed. So last week they came in, issued an uh, extension on this permit, 
and they want to move the house a little bit where the red is. You can kind of see in the dashed line, this is the existing, and they just kind of put a box in at the time. I'm not sure they knew what type of house they wanted. So, Margaret, you can take it from here. Sure. Um, yeah, I do have a, a more up-to-date plan. Uh, cause you had comments about putting up the, the, uh, the driveway in red uh, and the changes and the erosion control changes. So I, I did upgrade that plan. And if you want to let me share a screen, I can uh, bring that up. Okay, did you do that today? Yeah, I did. So how you do it, Margaret? You can screen share. So uh, just bring the plan up. And when you screen share, pretty much anything that's on your computer will show up. Okay. Uh, yeah. can you see that okay? No, you got in the bottom, hit screen share in the bottom of the your Zoom. Okay. Now you got to click on your... Can you see it? No. Not yet. See if I can bring it up. I got screen share. And, uh, hmm. Not coming up there at all? No. Not share screen. Um. Hmm. I think I, uh, let me, I have a, do you have the updated one, Steve? Yeah, I go. I had it. I had. It, I I'll pull it from the Google Drive. Oh, yeah, I have that one up too. All right, hang on one second. Where's the meeting now? You guys still there? Yeah, I am. Yeah. All right. Okay, we're in the wrong window. I know. Let me. Well, it's, it's a little different to screen sharing. Let me. Uh... Yep. Is it up here now? Oh, there we go. Margaret, is that it? Yep, that's it. So if you want to zoom right into the house. <laughs> Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, keep zooming. It's as far as I can go. Okay, that, that's fine. Um, so uh, you can see, you see the, uh, the proposed uh, house in red. I'm here with the, uh, the applicant, David LaRue. What he wants to do is build a ranch and not a colonial. So uh, the, the footprint's a little larger because it is a ranch. Uh, and you can see uh, inside the ranch in gray, the original gray box. Uh, and then in order to, and this is a drive-in on the side. So in order to make that swing, I had to realign the driveway a little to get into the garage. So you can see I've, uh, the, the driveway realignment also kind of in a red dashed. And you can see the original erosion control, that purple line that came up around. I had to move that back a little to accommodate the, uh, the driveway. And so what we also did uh, is we, uh, we included a, a vegetated uh, 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 fence, I, I guess, with shrubs there between the uh, proposed driveway and the uh, the wetland area, that's what those little dots are. Uh, okay. Winterberry, blueberry bushes. So basically, uh, yeah, uh, Mr. LaRue uh, wants to build a ranch here for himself. Uh, and, and he's getting to the point where he doesn't want a two story house. He can't, he can't have a two story house. He needs a ranch. So the septic system and the grading, none of that is going to change at all. 
that that all uh, fits right into these proposed uh, new house plan. Okay. Um, is there? So yeah, there's a little bit. There's a little more non-permeable surface. Is the driveway increased? Um, I can I can see the way the angles come in, and then there's a turnaround kind of behind there. How much has that increased the area of the driveway? Well, there was a turnaround with the other one also. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in an order, so because you have the property line right there, he, he can't back straight out. So he, he does need a turnaround because you don't want to back down this driveway. So it's, the amount of impervious increases a little, but I wouldn't say all that much. Okay. Yeah, because you're staying out of the... You're still staying out of the 50 foot buffer zone on the other side. We're staying outside of the 50 foot buffers on both sides, correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and this is being submitted as a minor plan change? Correct. All right. Uh, all right, board, what do you think? Buffer zone? <laughs> Everything's within the 100. Yeah, everything is. Does it impact buffer zone, yeah. the change? Um, no, not really, because the whole site's in the buffer zone anyways. So technically, there's a little bit more driveway within the 50, just because of the turnaround, and it goes right up to the edge. And that's my understanding, that's why the bushes are in there, because you had to go right up to the edge of the driveway, whereas before, the driveway was a little bit you know, closer in because the house wasn't quite as wide. That that's correct. Okay. The little red rectangle on top, is that the garage or is that a deck? That's a deck. In the back of the house it's a deck. So where and and, that, and to the far left uh is uh the that's the garage. How much bigger is the is this footprint for the ranch compared to the colonial that was originally proposed? Uh, the original, Can you see the, the 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 gray line here where my yeah. mouse is? Yeah. This is the original. This little gray line. But what's the footage? Oh. Uh, the original was thirty-eight by twenty-eight, and the proposed. Is 50, what is it? 56 by 28 or 32. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's a, this, the same house that was built on West Street, uh, right next to you, that, that ranch there. It looks like it might be a third larger, so 33% more or you know, the, the old house looks like it's three quarters of the size of the new one in terms of square footage. I, so what is if that? I, if I kind of imagined this were a tangram and, and moved it in. It's 56 by 28 and it's 1,600 square feet. So it's 1,600? This, this, this box is 1,600 square feet. And so how much more is it than the original square footage? This box is actually, this box is... Right, right. The other house is two floors, but the, the just the footprint here. Yes, this is larger. Right, we're just looking at footprint. Yeah, it's sixteen hundred square feet. But uh, Mr. Lanou needs a uh, needs to build a ranch and not a colonial. Yeah. Due to health concerns. So. Um, I live at 134 now. I have to, I gotta get out of my house. That's yeah. basically the issue. I was plan. I was planning on selling this to a builder two, two months ago. A lot, but I've been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. I've already had two surgeries and I've got to have uh, one more after I'm done building this house. All right, are there any other questions board? I mean, what are we feeling? Are we thinking that this is a minor plan change or are we thinking no? Is this the one that we 
we okayed uh, an additional three year extension on? It is. Yeah. Is there any more work within a 25 foot buffer? It doesn't look like the 25's on there. Um, if anything, the plantings look like they're within the 25. Uh, actually, yeah, there's just the one small little section. I have wetland flag 13. It comes out in a point. So right there, I've got the plantings at about 20 feet, but then the wetland starts to move away in both directions uh, from there. So you just see there's that one point. Uh, that's the closest spot. Uh, I've got the plantings, and then then it moves further away. Is the is the driveway pretty much level? I'm trying to look at the at the lines. The plantings are they planted on a slope? Is there a retaining wall? Is there, or is that, is that driveway pretty much level with uh, just above the wetlands? That that's pretty flat up through there. It's above the wetlands. Okay. Yeah, pretty flat. That's that, that line there is just the property line. It's right along the property line. Between the property line okay. and the line. I mean, for me, the driveway has moved over substantially. I mean, I it's hard for me to read the plan on my computer, but I mean, it looks like it's moved over 20 feet, maybe uh 25 feet so it's a lot of it's now within the 50 foot buffer and as you said it's getting close to the 25 foot buffer it doesn't seem it seems to me like it's uh it's more change than what we should just allow without a refiling okay But that's just my opinion. Okay, no, I know, and I want to I want to get a feel for what the rest of the board thinks before somebody decides to make any motions. So, so the procedure would be, you know, if it's a, um, you think it's a real minor plan change, you know, you can just, you know, typically the board just approves it. But if you think it's something that's substantial, where it's a minor plan change, like you know, instead of them filing a whole new DEP, they would modify this one. They would have a public hearing new plans and they would do a whole uh, they would do a whole uh, new hearing and pr procedure but they would keep the same dep number and then you would determine if you would accept those changes off of this dep number if you said no then he would just use his existing plan so the first step is to think if, if, if this warrants a minor plan change to the extent that you want a public hearing or if it's minor enough where it's just you know just We'll note it in the minutes and we accept the plan changes and we put it in the file, then you could do that too. Understood. Part of what I'm looking at and thinking though is that I'm I'm quite sure that we would approve the change, but yet I just don't know if this is too much of a change to to move forward with um you know without another review i don't know i mean that's i'm just I, i'm just appealing to you folks i i need some help here i mean i i i cannot navigate stairs and again this was not part of my plan i just built the other house three years ago i, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if this is something you're going to prove anyways i just i've got nowhere else to go i mean I, I'm just trying to expedite this as quick as I can for the sake of my wife and everything else so I can just get out of this situation as fast and as economically as I can. So mm -hmm. I, I'm just asking you, please, please don't ask me to go through a procedure that in the end I'm going to get it anyways. I mean, Understood. I'm begging you, really. That's, I, don't have, I don't know what else to tell you. I'm begging you. Understood.
Did you look? I mean, uh, yes, Margaret, really... did you look at shifting the house to the to the uh, other direction anymore to kind of get away from the yep. wetland that's on the property line? That's part of my issue is that we're impacting a wetland that's on that's on somebody else's property. Well, I've tr I tried rotating it. I got zoning issues, uh, uh, grading issues with the septic system. There's really that that house is in right in between the two fifty foot buffer zones. So there's really nothing else I that I can do with it. And, and, and to make the driveway work, uh, I do have to swing out like that. But I, in my opinion, I don't think that's a, a, a major change. No, I understand. So historically, we've, we've only said something's a minor change if there was a decrease in non-permeable surface area. And that's what's really getting me is still the non-permeable surface areas. Um, I'm with you that I wouldn't have gone any further to the right because the the looks like the wetland on the right has more of a slope, whereas the wetland on the left is at least, you know, close to the same level. Because, yeah, yeah like you are hitting both both 50-foot buffers. That's right. There, there's, I can't, I can't pretty much go anywhere other than that. And this is not a huge house. It's basically, like I said, it's the same house um, right there on uh, West Street there that was built a couple years ago. Yeah. It's not a big house, you know. All right, board. Um, I need a motion either to accept this as a minor plan change or to request that they um, they uh, come back with a public hearing. Where's the, uh, Margaret, where's the driveway drain to? The driveway drains to, actually it goes straight back, straight back uh, by the house and out in the backyard I have a swale, uh, just like on the original plan, that, that hasn't changed. It's, it's pretty flat up there with just a slight grade. And then it just kind of grades, uh, drains towards the back, uh, goes into natural drainage. Uh, there's a good, at least uh, between uh, the drainage and the, the proposed driveway, it's at least before it hits the wetlands, you know, going to go over 50 feet, probably close to 100 feet. So I have it graded towards the back of the house and then it hits the lawn and then it then it hits natural a natural swale and heads off to the uh the left so it's not draining directly into the wetland okay and, and we can ensure we can make sure that that's the case too uh, during construction everything gets uh, graded away from that wetland All right. I need to hear a motion one way or the other. I'm undecided on this one. <laughs> I, I yeah, I'm too. have gathered that. What do you think, Eric? What do you think, Mike? I still think it's a relatively, relatively minor change, which I think was the issue, whether. Well, I heard Margaret talking about the ranch on West Street a couple of years ago. I don't know if she's talking about my house. Yeah, um, the, one, the one right next to your house. That's not a ranch. Oh, I know the one you mean. Okay. Yeah, they fixed the, I know the one you're talking about. Um, that footprint isn't as big as what I was thinking. Um, 
the problem I have here more than anything is I didn't get to see this modified plan and until till now and I can't see it well enough because of this Avaya um, with zoom we could get a we could zoom in a lot better and I mm -hmm. I'm not getting a good picture of it because um, I think I've got some of the same concerns as Mark and I understand completely uh, why this gentleman wants to do a ranch instead of a colonial like I said I did the same thing a couple of years back but um, I I just didn't get to didn't get to get a good view of the plan and the and the and the uh, the footprint's quite a bit bigger. I understand what you had to do with the driveway. Um, like I said, I just I I would be more comfortable if I could uh, get a better view of of what we're talking about here. That's just my opinion. Let's, let's see if I can do something. Hi everybody. How many cars is that garage for? Again. How many cars is that garage for? Two cars. It's a two car garage? Yeah. Thank you. And that is a four bedroom house? Is that correct? Is that what I'm seeing? Three, three bedroom. Oh, yeah, let's see if I figured something out. We're still on 130 Southeast Main Street. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We're debating if it's a minor plan change or not. Okay. Is, is this on my screen? Is the plan on the screen again? Yes. Oh, that's much more zoomed in. Okay, that's now much I, better. I can see better now. Thank you. Oh, it just left. There it is. Yeah. It, it does say four bedroom. I thought it did, yes. Well, it, it was a four bedroom septic design, but the, the oh, house really? building is only a three bedroom. Okay. okay is, how's that? Is that good? Better. Uh, yeah. It's, it's better. So could I have a summary of the um, changes in any um, increase in impacts from Margaret. Yeah, there's a, oh, go ahead. Or, or Katie Grace, you can tell me too. Well, no, we, we were just reflecting that the uh, driveway has been brought out so that it can swing out more. There's a turnaround to face the garage. It was going to be a colonial. It's gone to a ranch, which increased the non-permeable surface area by, um, it went from a, a 32 slash 38 to 56 when it previously was a 32 by 38. So the area has increased by less than a third. Uh, the driveway area hasn't really increased, but it has moved it a, quite a bit closer into the 50 foot. The house is still not in the 50 foot. It's abutting the 50 foot on either side. And she's added plantings on the edge of the driveway against that property line. We also commented on the fact that you couldn't go further to the right, because not only are you on the 50 foot buffer, but there's a higher there's a, a greater slope on the right than there is on the left. But I suppose the driveway is pretty close um, to the same level as that wetland on the left. And then we did also mention that we've got a swale. Uh -oh. There we go. We've got a swale um, and the, the, uh, the way that the area is being landscaped for the, the water drainage is exactly as it was in the approved plan. So the thing, the only thing that's really changed is the increase in non-permeable surface in the driveways into the 25 or into the 50 on the left a little bit more. On the left, it's actually into the 25. I yep. add that as well. Okay. So the question is, is this a minor change um, or do we need to have it refiled and using the same DEP numbers. An amended order. Right. Yeah. So the the give and take would be the the addition of the plantings. Correct. 
And what was the increase into the um, jurisdictional areas for the uh, there's to the driveway? 50, yeah. So what's you get the, what's the square footage of the increase. I don't have that off the top of my head, but the entire site's in the hundred foot buffer zone. I mean that, that hasn't changed. So the amount of uh, it's just a uh, the, the drive more work is being done in the uh, the fifty foot with the uh, the driveway, having to shift the driveway. But the septic's not changing, the grading's not changing. It's just what is, uh, what's the width of the proposed driveway? Twelve feet. Okay, and it's going to be pavement. Uh, that the asphalt regrind. Okay. And um, hmm. Are, could you put a scale on your plan if you have a plan in front of you and tell me what the how many feet the driveway moved over so how far the left edges of the driveway is from that closest point of wetland. Okay, so the driveway, uh, the furthest uh, shift in the driveway is about 25 feet. Uh -huh. that, that's the furthest. Yep. Uh, and that's where, like I said, we, we have to swing into that, the garage. Uh, but that's only section and then uh, up towards the house the shift is uh is only about five feet mm -hmm. then like i said we can make the the uh the grading drainage all so it uh it all flows uh away from that wetland out into the backyard the backyard's higher though i see the grades going up 118 119 to 120. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, but actually, uh, it, it's going down to, to get into the, the garage under. I can regrade that to get that to, to, to flow in the backyard. So actually, uh, the grading's going down as I'm coming down the driveway, as I'm getting close to the garage. Do you have a garage, what the floor elevation is of the garage? Yeah, 118, 25. Yeah. 118? 118. 18, 25, and the driveway uh, where it makes the uh, the shift is at 120, and then it goes down to 119, and then at the garage it's 118, and I can easily create a swale in the backyard to, to keep that water away from that wetland on the right. So you'll have enough overland flow to, uh, you know, clean any type of stormwater uh, runoff coming down that driveway. We're not talking all that much anyways. Just a small section of driveway uh, that flows that way. If you see, there's a uh, the high point from the high point down towards the house. We're talking maybe about 75 feet uh, to 80 feet of a uh, driveway uh, that I have to deal with with regard to stormwater. So that's not a whole lot. Plus, it's uh, somewhat flat there, so. I don't anticipate much erosion either. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't read this plan and see how you're going to get water from not to not go from the garage towards the wetland. Because I see a high point on the driveway where there's a red dot at 123. Yeah, and you, yeah, said that, the, you said the garage was 118.25. That's correct. Back up again in the backyard. So I, I, I can't figure out how you get that water not to go to the left and go towards that wetland that's off property. Right there where the uh, the the, uh, the parking area is in the driveway, right in front of the garage, I can easily make a swale in the back. I've got uh, 118, 117. I can easily uh, create a swale to get that water to head in the other direction to give us plenty of overland flow. Is that shown on here? No, but I can do that if you uh, you'll give us a chance to.
Yeah, I guess for those reasons, I'm not comfortable with moving forward with this plan tonight. Has any work commenced yet on the lot? Uh, yes, the uh, the well's been installed and uh, they were getting ready to put in the smaller house, but then things changed and Mr. LaRue needs to, to build a, a ranch for himself. So that that's the plan now. He's going to build this house for himself where uh, previously it was going to build a colonial to sell. The builder was, the builder was. Yeah. So could you tell me about, I see um, on the back of the house, um, there's the red hashed. Um, why is the driveway extending to the backyard? So there's a turnaround. Because you see right where those plantings are, that's the property line. What's the um what's the distance from the house to the property line or the house to the plantings line? 25, 30 feet. Okay. One section, uh, anywhere from 28 feet to 38 feet. Where is the 38 feet from the front the left front corner? From the front corner. It's almost 40 feet. Um, okay, so there's no way to reduce that driveway to be a little bit um, smaller footprint. Not to make the swing into the, the garage coming in the side. Okay. I mean, it's it's a tough lot. Definitely is a tough lot for I mean for infiltration as far as swaling it um, for that water catching that water. I think we need to see that. Um, but I don't think that it would change our minds on what we would require for an amended order of conditions. It's it's simply just the the house footprint and the driveway, but we're still within the, the setbacks, the fifth world set the 50, right? Correct. Oh. Katie Grace, you running this? <laughs> this is disgusting, right? This is I just still trying. discussion. <laughs> I was trying. Uh, running isn't the right word. Slowly shuffling is, is the correct term. Um, so we're, this is discussion, correct? Yeah. Yeah, we're still discussing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I tried to entertain a motion, but nobody was entertained. Okay. All right. Um. All right, do we, do we go around and get the opinion of the board members now that they've seen the, the plan? Um, sure, I think this is a little more than normally what we would accept without an amendment. I agree. I'll buy that. Okay, Mike. Okay. All right, um, I think, Margaret, you've heard the consensus of the board. So you'll have to file for, unless you can come up with, I mean, you can always come back if you would like to modify that with the, um, the owner. Just run off. I mean, the, the, the lot's a tough lot. Okay. And so, uh, if, if we, we go with the amendment, that's not filing a new notice of intent. It's just another public hearing and just notifying the abutters, correct? It's it's modifying. It's and yes, it's a pub. It's you're using this existing DEP number and and, and filing uh, advertising and, and notifying the butters. Okay. So minor plan change. Sure. Yes. Okay, and and I, I got the sense from the board that if we did that, this this would be approved. As long as I you know show the uh, the 
the stormwater uh, controls to ensure that the uh, there's no uh, erosion into the wetlands. Correct. And I try to get a little ways away from that property line. As much as possible. It's not, that's not going to yeah, happen. Yeah, it's I, not going to happen. I can't. I, <laughs> who's, who's speaking? I'm the sorry. Dave LaRue, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What was, who was that? Dave LaRue, the owner. Okay. okay. Did you want to um, speak in support of the revised plan? Well, obviously i already i already spoke what i had to speak i mean i'm i'm just asking this is it's a it's i know it's a tough lot I, again but it's a medical issue i'm just trying to address some physical needs and i mean the property line's not it's not going to move we've done we tried we've been working on this thing for 3 weeks trying to figure it out this is the best i can come up with mhm mm i mean that that's this is the best I mean, I can't get a small any smaller house. My wife will divorce me. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that. I'm going from a 24. I mean, I got a brand new house next door. It's three years old. I hate. To, I don't want to move. I have to. Yeah. To a 1600 square foot house. I can't be smaller. And it's it's not the house because the house is in. It's it's just a lot. So I if you if you're gonna insist I move the property line, just tell. I mean the the I can't. We can't move it any other way and be able to get into the garage. I, I just there's nothing else to do. I don't I don't know what you want me to do. I just, sir, we apologize, but we're the conservation commission, so we are here to oversee the wetlands bylaws. And I apologize that it impacts you, but this house in the in the driveway impacts the wetlands for for forever. So we have to we have to review it on that for that reason yeah and the amendment would give the opportunity to see the distances the maybe the percentage or the square footage increase from the original approval and um have the opportunity of the abutters to speak on it so i think that's a consensus so margaret you know what we have to do. Um, I think there's a, you know, some hardship also. So uh, I think that, you know, to be open with the process, we need you to uh, um, re-advertise and formally re apply for the amendment. I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, what I'm trying to understand is if I go through this public hearing and I do what you want and the mothers don't complain, is it going to get approved? Don't have you go through all this to come back to the same point. And you say, I'm not going to approve it. Well, it's already been approved once. So, you know, that there is an approval available. The well is already drilled. So that is not moving. So that has to be considered also. Um, so I think that I would be, I I'll speak for myself. I would be in favor only, um, you know, taking into account everything that you're doing as far as mitigation and preventing runoff from that small portion of the driveway. Okay. Okay, Margaret. Okay. All right. Have a good night. Oh, we'll Margaret. see you soon. Margaret, you have the next one. Yeah, I know. I know it. I got to get ready. Okay. Oh, uh, Tracy. <laughs> yeah. When we uh, we briefly reviewed the minutes and we weren't ready to act, but one of the things we, we said we'd like to do in the future is when we go to a, the next discussion item or a public hearing, um, yeah. we would mention the actual d time, um, like 7.55 or something, so the potential future minute taker can, instead of just putting a timestamp, uh, from the video, which turns out to not be accurate, sometimes um, we can actually put the time that say is on your clock. Okay, very good. So yeah. Just do, do it orally. Okay. Thank you. All right, you can. You just keep an eye on me. Okay. <laughs> if, if you if you need to rem remind me on it. Okay. I'm looking for my agenda. 
Is it not in the meeting folder? It's in the See? email. It should be in the yeah. Message. Unfortunately, I have too many emails from Steve. <laughs> oh, wow, shocking. The next, one's the, the next one's the extension request on 134 Southeast Main, DP 1340926. 134 okay. Southeast Main. Okay. Steve, do you want to give an overview? Uh, also, just, it's 756. This is the uh, this, 756. This is the lot. This is the lot right next to the one we just talked about. They are asking because it's a shared driveway. The portion of this this lot we just talked about is not finished. And it runs on this lot. So um, until that's done, they're going to want a, a three-year extension on the order of conditions. I can bring the plan up. Let me. Yeah. Oh, I found the agenda, so that's good. So the plan that's, that I have on the screen right now, so this is the one we just talked about. This is the one they're asking for another three-year extension. This is pretty much all completed except for this little portion of the driveway right here. And this will get done when this house gets done. If, when, Okay. Board, any objection? No. No. I'll answer the motion for a three year grant a three year extension for this um number. I move we grant a three year extension for one thirty four Southeast Main Street. Motion been made. Second. Second in uh roll call vote. Art Montmany, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Eric Harris, aye. Mark Mungem, aye. KG Dudley, aye. Okay, thank you. Okay, next one, 68 Woodland Road. 758. Thank you. I like it, Mark. All right, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was always writing them down anyway, but now I'll just oh, say well. it. So we have a letter uh, requesting um, hmm, superseding order of conditions. I don't think that this is under our jurisdiction. You know, sometimes it's easy because you can go ahead and do it. I mean, it's... When is it expiring? Jack, are you on the phone? I am, yeah, it expires on May 21st. Twenty twenty one. What? Twenty twenty one. Yes. We just extended across the street a few uh, a few meetings ago. That was a superseding order. No. Um, I don't believe it was. No. No. So I don't believe um, we have jurisdiction of that. Um, which is interesting. If you give me a moment, I can just double check, but I don't believe uh, we are able to even issue an extension for a superseding order. Yeah, so we ran this to 88 West Street, so that, you know, that sometimes the VEP is funny. I mean, we certainly procedurally, because um, it's when it's in May, and even if it ended next week because they got the letter in requesting it before the commission makes a decision they can, that's proactive. So Jack, you can certainly wait and have you get a thing from the DEP to see if they want to grant the extension since it's their order. Okay, so is that what you're telling us to do, to go right to them? Yes, yeah. they issued it to you. Okay. But in, you know, you still have the request in front of the commission, so that's more, you know, as a time keep too. So, but so if if they say for some reason it's up to the local commission, we'll come back to you guys. Get get that in writing and come back. Yeah. To you. Okay. <laughs> They're not gonna say that. Um, and you have a tolling period for the state of emergency as well. Right. 
Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. Let's see, I'm just, um, you just give me one second. Yeah, I'm not seeing it, but um, yeah, I don't think that we would be able to even do that. I'm going to agree with you. Okay. All right, moving on. Next item on the agenda at Old Business 802. Request for continuance, uh, NOIDP number, public hearing continued 62 Manchog Street, St. Dennis Church, earth removal. Um, there, was there a letter, Steve, sent in? There was a, an email. Okay. Um, I don't know, I haven't heard from them at all um, how ready they really are. So I know February 8th, we have the uh, six NOIs from these Jefferson Drive. So. You can put them on there. Yeah, let's uh, or send skip them uh, two meetings. Two meetings. Do you have that date? I don't have that date on me. Um, let's see here. You said February. What's the next one? February 8th? The February 22nd? Yeah, yeah, the 22nd, right? Because I had it as tentative. That's right. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. I move that we extend the the continuance of, of this public hearing for 62 Manchog Street to the meeting of February 22nd. Motion's been made. Second. Second. Roll call vote. Art Montmany, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Mark Munjamai. KG Dudley, aye. Eric. Eric Harris, aye. Okay, motion guys. All right, thank you. Uh, next item will be the new business at 804 p.m. Uh, notice of intent, public hearing, 34 Grove Street, Hayward Homes. Uh, one second. That is in a, that should be on the drive, the legal ad. Got it. Okay. Tana Douglas, Conservation Commission, 24. 9 Depot Street, Douglas, Mass, 01516, legal notice for public hearing pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, the Town of Douglas Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on January 25th, 2021 at 7 p.m. for an NOI filing by Hayward Homes located at 34 Grove Street, AM, Assessor's map 143-2 for work to be done pursuant to the Town of Douglas Wetland Bylaw in the Wetland Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40. The proposed work involves construction of a single family house and appurtenances. Construction activities include a wetland crossing in bordering vegetated wetlands. Public participation will be via virtual means only pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending Certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place 
This meeting of the Douglas Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation. The public may participate via remote participation. A website for the meeting will be provided on the conservation agenda posted on the town's website at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Copies of the NOI may be examined electronically by contacting the Conservation Commission. January 4. Okay. Um, is Great there job. someone presenting? Also? Yes, name and address, please. Okay, uh, Margaret Bacon, Civil Site Engineering. I'm here representing Hayward Homes uh, regarding a uh, proposed development at 34 Grove Street. Uh, thank you. Do you want to give a little history that this this project was approved pro previously? And yes. Back in what 2006, Margaret? Uh, I believe so. I got, a, I got a plan here that's 2005, but I so somewhere around there, 2005, 2006. The NOI review says 2006 DEP 1430734 that it was never started and that we would need to close the old filing. Correct, and and I did submit a request uh, a, re a certificate of compliance requesting that this meeting be closed out because it didn't start, never started. Okay. We should have a copy of that. Steve, do we have a copy of that request? Yeah. You, I believe it should be in the drive. So if, if you want to approve that, that'd be. I'll entertain a motion. As the work commenced on the old uh, order. I'll move. Well, I'm looking for there's no as built plan because nothing happened, right? Correct. Nothing happened. All right. So then I will move. Uh, to issue the certificate of compliance with the comment that no work has occurred. Correct. Right. Motion has been made. Second. Uh, second by Mike, was it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Art Mobbany, aye. Mike Rucko, aye. Eric Harris, aye. Mark okay, thank you. Okay, now we can move forward. And Steve, do you want to just give us a little overview? Let's see. Yeah. Can you see the plan okay? Uh, you yep. could zoom in a tick. That's better. And I have a video. So, so you come off the street, um, and this is pretty much all upland. As you come down to the back of the property here, there's houses on either side of the uh, to the right and left of this driveway. And then you'll see there's a stone wall here. When you see my video, you'll see the stone wall and there's a little natural break right here. And there's, well, there's a wetland, it's it's a wooded wetland. Um, and this whole area here, the, the crossing here, the original plan only had one pipe in here, but I looked at the plan from 2006 and I actually had video from back then that showed water coming through close to the stone wall and during certain times of years, it really flows. So I asked Margaret to put a couple more pipes in here just so it, water doesn't just, you know, block up. It has the ability to sheet flow like it's doing now. I'm and looking I, at the so, old new plan, and the old that? plan shows four. I'm looking at the mm -hmm. file in the Google Drive that says 34 Grove Street, old and new plans. Yes. And that one's got four. I had four at the time. Margaret had a copy yeah, of that. She can talk it's about what she wants. Go ahead. Well, I'm only because the new one has a different, you've got like three in the plan that you're showing, but the one that I've got open from the Google Drive shows one, shows one. 
I think she just revised this. Um, oh, okay. Um, based on my comments this week. All right. Thank you. And I also asked her because if you want to see the video, it's such a wooded, it's such a wooded wetland with a lot of large uh, old growth pine that um, to, to try to eliminate the amount of replication area. So I think she split it up um, because it's such a wooded uh, wetland that you'd be creating a big hole in this area and it'd be like a magnifying glass heating it up. So she kind of split it on either side. Uh, she has a dewatering basin. And what? And then the house, is, the house sits back. There's a little knoll here with come up on top of a ridge. And let me zoom out a little bit, and you can kind of see that the wetland kind of surrounds the entire property. And it's the property of the project where it's sitting is right in the middle here. So if I can, let me see if I can. Uh, Let's see a video of this. Steve, did you have your um, comment sheet in the folder? I did. It should be. Okay. Um, they did pay the additional fee. Um, so here is. Is mm. it a video showing? Uh, huh. It's in slow motion. The board members may want to just take a peek at it, and the audience can um, access that from the Google Drive. Um, it's going very slow as far as as far as buffering. That's too bad. Yeah, because it's not on the. Uh, this is on my hard drive. I can so see I, a lot of. Yeah, let me see if I can just kind of stop it. I, um, There's so an existing the screen, in the wall. If you, right, if you can kind of see the uh, what I show now. This is right, pretty much where the crossing is going. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is pretty much wet and one flag B. B2, where I'm standing now, you can kind of get a flavor of what the, I'm just hand doing this. Mm -hmm. What the area looks like, the wooded, how wooded it is. And so this is a shot going back to right where the, uh, right where the, pretty much where the crossing is headed. Oh, I found the comments also, by the way. It was under comments. So, Steve, everything addressed on your comment sheet everything with the revised. Uh, pretty much on the on the comment sheet, um, but I know that the, you know DEP had some comments too. Did you, I don't know, and we just got a DEP number? Yes, we did. In the latest plan I submitted uh, addressed DEP's comments. They had comments regarding the overhead wire, just to show the utility poles on the plan. Uh, I did that, mm -hmm. and then they also for the replication area, they wanted me to include a, a couple of trees besides just shrubs. So that, that's on the, re the latest revised plan. That, that's where their comments were. Yeah, I was wondering about that electric pole. Yeah, it doesn't show on this plan. You, you do have uh, one more revised plan, uh, Steve, that just shows the uh, utility poles, proposed utility poles, and, uh, and then just added a couple of uh, additional trees in the replication area. Obviously, I, I, I place the utility poles uh, not to be placed in the wetlands. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, National Grid's going to put them where they want, but uh, as long as they're not in the wetlands. And did you put the location arrow on there? 
The what? Location arrow, like the north. They're saying something about um, this label may be lacking a location arrow, the adjacent parcel to the south of the proposed driveway for DEPs. Oh, yeah, I, I think he was a little confused regarding the uh, the the. I think uh, the utility poles I show out on the street, I, I think he thought those were straight across somebody's property and onto this this property, which was not. Oh. So I revise those, that plan. You have a copy of that. Okay. And you then. Download, you want me to download the new one? You want me to download the new one? I just saw your email. Yes, yeah. please. Um, we did we move the proposed stockpile area outside of the 50 foot buffer? Yes, I did. Okay. And also, uh, you know, as Steve was saying, this plan was uh, previously approved back in 2006. Uh, so basically, due to the you know the the locations of the wetlands on this site, there's really all, only one place you're going to put. And so this plan really isn't much different than the plan that was previously approved, except for the crossing. Now, I I did add additional culverts along the crossing and I did drainage calcs and I believe that the, the number of culverts I have in there is more than enough to accommodate uh, any type of storm or storm water that's gonna flow through this area. Uh, you'll see that there isn't really a really uh, uh, defined uh, channels out there you can see where the water is flowing but you know not a lot of scour or anything like that that, that indicates large flow amounts and i know the original plan uh that was approved back in 2005 showed four culverts and some of those culverts were 36 inches uh large which is you know way more than what this site uh, needs uh so basically what i was able to do i did out the culverts uh so i have three now instead of two in the middle and i was also able to make those culverts a little smaller so i could lower the profile of the road so basically my, my wetland impacts are less on this design than the, uh, the previous <laughs> I, also had suggested, I tried to revise the replication area to minimize the amount of large pine trees that are, are coming down split it in uh, two sections on each side of the driveway. Uh, when we actually go to construct the wetland, I'll be out there with the contractor, and, and sometimes you can save some of those trees if you, you work with an excavator. Not a whole lot of scraping is going to be required in order to make that area uh, a viable replication area. So actually, in a nutshell, this plan uh, it has less impacts than the due to the, the change in the, uh, the the crossing. Okay, thank you very much. This is the updated plan. Thank you, Steve. I got it late Saturday. Okay, um, did we cover everything that was we revised? Here. In summary, the utility poles moving the stockpile area outside the 50, um, the plantings. Um, we've revised the, the culverts. Anything else, Margaret? No, I pretty much addressed the pines. Yeah, I'll uh, Steve I, the DEPs. I do believe we have a neighbor probably here that has, might want to have some comments. Okay. Okay. Let, let's um take the board comments first. Um. So Katie Grace. Are you um, with us? I am with us. I'm I'm with <laughs> here. I'm with you. I'm here. Um. No, I really I really like uh, the revisions to the plan. Um. I really, I really don't have any comments. I'm a little, I'm honestly impressed. Everything's in this little island of space uh, <laughs> that's available on that knoll. Um, 
I did notice because I was looking at the previous plan that this one, um, this house is larger than the one in the 2006 plan. Uh, there's just there's more non-permeable surfaces. Um, but I mean, it all still seems to fit on that little island, so. Okay. Um, Mark? <clears throat> Um, any consideration given to an open bottom pipe instead of three culverts? If you do an open bottom pipe, you, you have to raise everything up. And by raising everything up, then you have a, a more of a side slope. So then you end up with more impacts, more wetland impacts. The, uh, the crossing area gets wider. Right now, I think at the widest point, I'm like maybe 12 feet are uh, 20 feet across at the toe of the slope. But as soon as you start putting in those larger culverts, everything comes up and then the grading goes out and you end up with more impacts. Why is the pavement 16 feet wide on the crossing and 12 feet wide in other areas? Where is it 16 feet? Looking at the detail, driveway cross section. That uh, uh, two foot shoulders. I got shoulders at the edge of the uh, the driveway, so I got twelve foot paved width, and then okay. Shoulders gotcha. that. All right, I missed that. Thank you. All right. No, I don't think I have anything. Mike. Me neither. Eric, I'm good. Hi, Steve. Um, no, I think she's made all the appropriate changes. Okay. Um, this is a public hearing. Um, anyone in the audience have any questions or concerns in regards to this application? Yes, I do. This is Kathy Whitney. I'm going to butter. Name and uh, your address, Kathy? Uh, Kathy Whitney, 32 Grove Street. Thank you. Were you able to review the plan? I was. I've seen it several times. I've been here for 25 years. This is like round, I don't know how many <laughs> that I've been through this. Okay. But um, my concerns are, um, yes, it's an island, but the island is up on a hill. And um, Steve, I'm just wondering when you took those videos, because I took a video just last week and there's a river that runs through my yard. Right. Um, through your yard. I took it out earlier in the fall. Yeah, that's the dry time. Um, there's a river, and if you follow it all the way up through the back, it actually runs down that hill where they want to put the house, and it runs right through my backyard and actually comes into my backyard. And that usually runs from usually spring through like, you know, July or so, not so early. It was very early this year. So I think it would be good if you guys looked at it in the spring because I'm just worried that the water is going to be even worse. You know, once you start building up on a hill, that's going to be runoff that comes back down into my yard. I mean, if you can fix the water from going into the back of my yard, great. <laughs> um, Margaret, do you know the flow that she's talking about? Um, yes, yeah, so if I'm on Grove Street, uh, looking up towards the lot, are you on the right or the left? If you're facing where you want to put the, put the house, I'm on the left. Okay, I do know um, the, the wetland up there, to the left of the, uh, the house, uh, that wetland on that side, yes, there, there's a, a channel that uh, flows down on the left side house straight down the hill um and then yeah. it all gets to the bottom of the hill because uh, i think there's a lot of rocks in the area it, it, you know every time i go out there it dissipates it, it disappears at, at the bottom of the hill i don't see a whole lot of wetland vegetation uh but you can see the uh the street, uh area where it's scoured but that, that's on the uh the left side of the house, okay? Uh, uh, that comes down the hill and then probably into your yard, I guess, during the spring high flows. 
Yeah, it actually runs, it runs all the way through. It goes over to my other neighbor's house that live, the swallows that live on the other side of me. And um, I think if there's actually a tube over there that actually goes underneath the street. So it goes pretty far. So it runs along the back of my house in front of the, the stone wall that you're, that you have on here. Cause I, the stone wall runs through my backyard as well, but it's on the house side, not behind the stone wall. So it runs on the back of my house. But what happens is my, my, I have like a tiny little hill in my backyard. And so then the water flows actually down that close to my, not very close, but close enough to my patio. Right, and I, I think the water you're talking that flows down pretty heavy is to the uh, to the left of that the proposed house. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there's a there's a little uh, uh, channel there that comes straight down, and that doesn't go through uh, where the driveway's going. That that flows uh, downstream from where the proposed driveway and culverts are going. So that that, that wetland up at the it, it kind the drive, of the driveway that they are showing will go right over it. Right. Well, then maybe I'm not thinking about the wetland, uh, uh, the, the stream you're talking. But there's might... a, there's a, that wetland that surrounds that property. It kind of at the at the top of the hill. It flows in both direction. One flows to the left side of the house, and the other flows to the right of the house. And I did a, a drainage analysis for that little sub watershed. And the culverts I've proposed more than accommodates the amount of uh, flow that'll come down that hill. It's not a very big watershed. And I'm not saying you don't get flow, but uh, what we've designed here would accommodate any flow that comes down the hill. So Steve, could you pull up the assessor's map I'm, and I'm trying show to pull us? Right now. Yeah, I'm, trying, I'm trying to load it right now. Um, I think right, one, of the other, one of the other oh, items that, that they're not yep. uh, that they haven't brought up is you know I know I can see where you're putting you know the road and everything and is that whole road going to be paved or is it going to be dirt towards the end and only paved at the top because that's that I believe would pick up a lot of dust and everything you know road, yeah. the asphalt grindings which is almost like a, a paved service surface. It's ground up asphalt that pretty much it, you lay that down and it compacts pretty hard. Because it's got it's going to be a very I long driveway. The, yeah, I thought the plan noted asphalt. Yeah, not regrind. Exactly. Well, asphalt regrind is the same thing. No. Well, not really. <laughs> no. Grindings will move. So I think, um, can we get clarification on will it be a paved driveway or will it be a regrind from okay. the owner? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Dale Bangman here. Uh, yeah, I, I was. I'm. Pla I will pave it. That's not a problem. Okay. She wants the dust okay. down. Not a problem. Okay. Hey. Hey, Dale. You're <laughs> you did welcome. my septic. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thanks How's for that. Been? Still good. working really good. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but, Dale, I just wanted to bring up, and I don't think um, the owner of the property probably brought this up, but in the deed, she actually signed that there's going to be, she's supposed to put in, as soon as she sells the property, a 500 foot long cedar stockade fence, eight feet high on my property so that we don't run into this problem with you know cars going back and forth and kicking up dirt and kicking up rocks and things like that so i don't know if you knew about that but it is in the yeah. deed so well, that's fine we'll, 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 if it's we'll, we'll look it up if it's there it's there okay cool yeah, we'll have to speak through the chair um, oh, i'm is, sorry that's okay <laughs> And we'll stick to um, the conservation topics, but you guys can, of course, since you know each other, reach out um, after the meeting. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, Steve, you got the um, the assessor's map up. Hello. Yeah. Can you see it? Yep. Yeah. So this is this Are is across. 
This is where the pipes are going right about here, right where I have the yeah. cursor. Mm -hmm. And the house is going right up about here. And the butter location. Yep. Right That's here. Me. Yep. Yep. Okay. And you are saying the water is flowing from where to where? Yep. So um right where the like number one is, there's a river that it it well again, it runs from probably like March, February, March, depending on how much water we get or how much rain we get through to like June, July. But it runs like with the two oh six sixes, it it just runs all the way back through there. But then there's a little slope to the back of my house, and this it, it's literally like just pools there, the water. And that's what I'm I'm really worried about because my well is back there too. Okay, and do we know the source of the water flow? Well, is I, it coming? Be coming through the culverts that you're proposing where the crossing is it comes well when i followed it um a couple weeks ago when i or a week a half ago that when i took the video um it runs like i don't know see what it pretty much follows those those yellow lines i'm, I'm like pointing like you can see that yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the yellow lines there that uh you know that shows like the the, the actual um outline of the property yeah that's where it seems to be running off and then it's all it's actually all through there it's it's it just pops up everywhere I, there was a vernal pool back there somewhere i couldn't find it this time but i know that there was a vernal pool somewhere back there okay all right so no relation to the crossing it's not in the same location coming out where the crossing's going it's just at it at the driveway area. You think well, it crosses? I, I would assume through. that the driver would keep going over that, right? Mm hmm. Margaret, do you know where she's talking about for the flow? If you look at my my plan, that wetland, um, I just tried to flag what was on uh, uh, our property, but that wetland does flow in that direction towards her house. I mean that that's existing. Yeah. I mean, okay. So. And like I said, that wetland's kind of strange because as it gets down towards the bottom of the hill here, it, 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 it like Steve said, it's a forested wetland, but wasn't a whole lot of evidence of uh, a lot of uh, wetland plants. I, I think a lot of the wetland are, you know, uh, just goes into the ground, except probably during the the, uh, the high storm events. You know, you see it on the surface, but I, I haven't seen a whole lot of flow through there or a lot of scour. Uh, through the crossing area that tells me that there's a you know a good flow through there I didn't see any evidence of that nor did my drainage calcs provide that either okay yeah your watershed calculation <clears throat> okay so um kathy did you have any other comments or questions um no i don't think so trying to keep notes <laughs> yeah right um board yeah Thomas? i just i just wanted to so my understanding of kathy's concerns is is you know in addition to the culvert it's the idea that increasing the non-permeable services because of the driveway in the house of everything would potentially increase the flow that that Kathy's concerned with uh, flowing towards the Whitney property? Yes. Okay. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking I, I might want to take a walk out there. I would also want to do that. Hmm. Um, okay. I'm assuming all the flags are in place. Correct. All right. Yeah. I mean, it would be really nice. I would appreciate it. And then the center line of the driveway or just at the crossing. What do you want to see? Both. Okay. All right. The center line of the driveway, the start and finish of the crossing, 
and then probably where the driveway ends, roughly there are the houses. I don't think I need to see like the four corners of the house because I can see where the house is situated on that island. But I think I'd want to mm -hmm. know where the house at least starts. Sure, I, I can put some flags up there. Okay. Okay. Um, Whitney, anyone... Can we go on your property on our site walk? Absolutely. I'll make you cookies. I work from home. I'm home all the time. So. <laughs> oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, you won't be able to get through the woods. You're going to have to go on my side yard. So that's not a problem. Okay. So, and we would hope that. Um, I mean, all the calculations were reviewed by DEP and done by Margaret, so we should not um, have any adverse flow um, as a result of that crossing. So we'll just take a peek. Um, board, do you want to just go at your leisure or do you want to set a day time? Uh, how long would it take for Margaret to get the flags up? I, I can have them out there. Uh... By, by Friday. I mean, or plan on going before that. Maybe the weekend would be fine. I think the weekend is completely fine. Yeah, I get them up by then. Okay. All right, board. Um, you can go at your leisure on the weekend. Kathy will have the cookies waiting. Okay. Uh, For sure. Entertain um anyone else in the audience. Questions or concerns? No, okay. I'll entertain a motion to continue this hearing to February 8th. So moved. Uh, so moved by Art. Mike. Seconded by Mike. Roll call vote. Art Montmany, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Eric Harris, aye. KG Dudley, aye. Mark Munger, aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Okay. All right. Steve, we didn't open up 93 Cedar yet, right? 97 chestnut. What? 97 chestnut. Oh, that's the next one? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Did we open that? Yet? No. Yeah. That's new. No. Okay. Real, All right. Sorry. Real quick, is 34 Grove that's really at 34 Grove? The site walk? Uh, yes. She it's was at room. 34. Yeah, it's okay, a little just, thin strip going in from Grove Street. So if you go to 38. That's yes, thank you. Okay. So it's between right. 32, it's between 32 and 36. Oh. All right. Oh. But, um, hopefully there'll be some markings at the entrance. I think there's a for sale sign out there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good. There Perfect. Is. Yep. Perfect. Um, okay, 97 Chestnut Street, 839. Tom Douglas Conservation Commission, 29 Depot Street, Douglas, Mass, 01516, legal notice for public hearing, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, Tom Douglas Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on January 25th, 2021, at 7 p.m. for a notice of intent filing by Mike Quinos, located at 97 Chestnut Street, for work to be done pursuant to the Town Douglas Wetland Bylaw and the Wetland Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40. The proposed work involves proposed construction of a two car detached garage within the 100 foot buffer zone of a boarding vegetated wetland. Public participation will be via virtual means only, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th. 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law general law chapter 30a section 18 and the governor's march 15th 2020 
order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Douglas Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation. The public may participate in this meeting via remote participation. A website for the meeting will be provided on the conservation agenda posted on the town's website at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Copies of the NOI may be examined electronically by contacting the Conservation Commission. Okay. And Steve, do you want to do an overview of this? Oh, yeah, this is an RDA that came before the commission a few weeks back, and the commission gave a negative determination uh, to, for the proposed garage, requesting that an NOI be filed so they could give some conditions on the on the plan and to review a little yeah, bit more in detail. The positive RDA. Let's say negative, positive. Yes. Okay. Thank All right, Andy. And Margaret's here if she wants to give an overview. Yeah, you can um, tell us about the project, Margaret. Sure. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Based on feedback that we got from through the RDA process, uh, my client decided to go ahead with the, the NOI for a proposed two bay garage. Uh, for his property and basically what we tried to do is keep as much of the garage on the existing uh, gravel drive as possible and also to line it up with the house and to also uh, you know try to keep it as far enough away from the wetland as possible so we had a few things to juggle and and then we looked at putting it on the other side of the house but because of zoning uh that would not uh work on the uh the left side of the house so, so basically uh you know there there's the plan the picture pretty much uh says it all and so just a, a metal uh two bay garage my client would like to build in the, the buffer zone so it looks like about 10 percent of it roughly is inside the 50 foot buffer uh the other way around. 90%. Yeah. Oh, just, uh, just the opposite, right? Sorry. Yeah, most of this. But due, due to the zoning and the septic and other things, pretty much that, that seems like the most best practicable. Not too many options. Um, what type of foundation will this be on? Uh, is it going to have a foundation? I think it's going to be a, a, on a slab. I, I guess I don't have the answer to that. Okay. Mike's, um, Mike's here, but I, I would say it would be a slab. Okay, so we'd want to know the type of excavation. I don't see a stockpile area on here and any um, buffer zone deterrent plantings or signage or um, we see that we're not increasing any of the disturbance towards the wetland, but we don't want to, um, you know, are you removing, say, that existing gravel driveway and going to restore it, the one behind, the section behind the proposed garage? Can you restore that back to, um, you know, either revegetate or lawn area um what's the plan over there what are you giving us to um you know for mitigation okay for a structure within now if it's a slab that's one thing but um structure within the 50 foot so what, what do you mean uh a slab is one thing um uh, well as far as excavation so the extent of the excavation so you're, yeah, so uh, there's driveway behind the garage now. Is that remaining? I don't see any um, trade offs. Okay, so you're looking for some mitigation. I okay. mean, that's my opinion. I, I will have to um, put it out to the board also, but those are just my original thoughts. Um, what's the distance between the house and the proposed garage? Um, it is 36 feet. I think we spoke about this, uh, the size, um, you know, uh, at the positive RDA. I'd have to look back on, um, you know, the, the sheer size of it is encroaching. Um, 
So what are the options for that? And then as far as the setback goes, uh, moving it forward to the front setback line of 50 feet, I know it's in front of the house, but that would move it probably about 50% out of there. I know you'd have to stay about 10 feet from the leach field, but relocating that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you, you can move it forward a little, but then, yeah, like I said, I have the uh, septic system. That's my, you know, my best guesstimate where I have it right there. Uh, but then you got breakout and things like that. So I, I don't want to get too close to the septic. Mm -hmm. So we need to know the what we're doing with the site work. Um, the alternatives. Tracy, in the, in the September 14th meeting, it did come up that, that it was going to be on a slab. Okay. What else did we say? Uh, that it was going to be inside the current existing driveway. It was going to be 28 mm -hmm. by 36. Mm -hmm. It looks uh, huge in the drawing. It does look it huge. Is huge. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if the dimensions have changed. Nope, the, it's the same dimension. Okay. And we did issue a positive RDA. Okay. Um, let's go board for comments, concerns. Let's go around uh, Katie Grace. Yep, so I have the same, uh, you know, concerns that, that you voiced. We want to see more on this plan in terms of mitigation. But, I mean, also it's just, yeah, the size of the garage and considering. So I'm seeing, like, the edge of wetlands shown. Um, and then there's a tree line on the other side. I just want to confirm there's not another wetland on the other side. On the other side. Like across the street, there's not another buffer zone. Uh, nothing jumped out at me, put it that way. <laughs> okay, nope, that's fine. Um, so yeah, then looking at that, the front area seems like a more plausible space um, for a garage. Because uh, again, you just, just um, you know, 90% of it is within that buffer zone uh, when there's more space on the lot that's not in the buffer zone. Okay. That's all. Okay. Um, Art, did you have any other comments or questions? No. Okay. Um, Mark. Uh, thanks, Tracy. Yeah, I would repeat what you said, Tracy. I think that this plan is um, needs more information. Um, I'd like to see what the proposed driveway is, where the proposed driveway is, what, you know, what the surface of that driveway is, some elevations I think would be good, would be necessary. And uh, what's happening with the section of driveway behind the garage? Is that going to be restored to grass? Is it going to be restored to trees? Uh, what, how that's going to be handled? Um, it just needs a lot more information. Okay, thank you. Mike? Nothing to add that hadn't been said. Okay, Eric? Um, yeah, just like a mitigation area um, for the garage. Good. Okay, um, thank you. And anyone in the audience have questions or concerns in regards to this application? No, Steve. Yeah, um, unfortunately, I can't show the video because um, it's just it's, good, it's too choppy. But it, it would. My concern is the um, the extension of the driveway behind the proposed garage. Um, I think all that should be regardless if it gets approved or not. It looks like there's a little bit of a. I don't know if it's encroachment, but it's awful close of to the existing wetland. So all that I, I'd like to see a mitigation plan of all that asphalt and all in in any work that's trying to that's close to the wetlands if possible to restore that 
and um, and add that to the plan. And also, there is there doesn't look like there's any proposed grading, Margaret, on that um, back right corner. Is there? Okay, no, but I'll I'll put it in grading. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll adjust the grading, especially too with the driveway. Proposed uh, there, and what we're going to remove, and uh, so I'll, I'll revise. Okay, just for a point of clarity, that the driveway is existing gravel driveway. You are not expanding that or changing it, correct? Uh, no, but we will be taking it out where the obviously where the garage is going, and then um, I'll, we can line the driveway up so it goes into the garage. So yeah, we'll be modifying the uh, the driveway a little, probably making it smaller. Okay, we like to make it smaller. And if um, you could provide some um, plus minus on the impervious, um, you know, the net, yeah. good. Uh, you know, that back right corner is yeah. pretty sensitive. So if we can kind of move away from that, um, then the, the method for construction. Um, the stockpiling, I can see that you can either take it off site or keep it outside the 100. Um, you know, it shouldn't be much material with just a slab. Yep. Okay. Yeah, but we don't know what the elevation is. It may be that they're planning to fill a couple of feet. So that's why we need to know what the elevations are. Sure. I don't see any proposed grading though. So I would be right. under the assumption there is no proposed grading. Exactly. Um, and then I want to see the distance between the house and the proposed garage too. If you could put a, a sure. distance on that yep. and see if we can move that forward to create some uh you know buffer between that hill, the little hill. Okay. How big is this garage supposed to be in terms of uh, the three <laughs> car, four car? I believe it's uh, it's two bays. Two bays. But it's two big bays, Mike. It's not a car garage. This is a <laughs> like a heavy equipment garage. Ah. Okay. Yeah. On the plan, you can see the image of the um, the garage there. Yeah, thank you. There's an existing garage for cars on the other side of the house. Correct. So okay. this I, is like a big, big uh, warehouse, essentially, or so a small it's 20, warehouse. It's 28 yes. by 36. Yeah. Which honestly it, isn't as big as that picture looks, but it's still yeah. fairly large. Yeah. Yeah, now that I'm looking at it, it looks like there is an exit door to the back to where that existing uh, gravel area is. But the, the pictures are not exactly proportional, Margaret. Right. These are the plans that, you know, it's a typical, uh, this <laughs> is a typical building. It may not be exactly what he's building, but I'll, I'll find out. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. I don't know that we want to roll up door heading towards the back. If that is at the back. Yeah, I think we need to have a trade off here. Um, with some restoration versus having an exit to the backyard. Although, uh, if we can't get around the garage on the right side, we need to figure out where's the access to the backyard. Um, so, Margaret, if you can just get some clarity on that for us, that would be excellent. Um, anyone in the audience have any questions or concerns in regards to this filing? Ralph? Is it? Oh, do you know, uh, Steve, what hearing that person's for? 
Yeah, the next one. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, I'm not seeing any. So, um, Margaret, would you be ready for the February 8th? Yep. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to continue. So moved. Second. To February 8th at 7 p.m. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, roll call vote. Mark Moffini, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Eric Harris, aye. KG Dudley, aye. Mark Munjamai. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll see you. Thank you. Next time. You're welcome. Okay. Margaret, um, I'm busy. <laughs> next in RDA, public meeting 93 Cedar Street at 856. Did you continue that last one on February 8th? Yes. Okay. What time is it? 7 p.m. What time is it now? It's 8.56. I thought we continued one earlier that would have been 7. No? Oops. No, no the 8th. Is this a pop quiz? The eighth is a Monday. <laughs> it's not a holiday, right? No. No. Okay. All right. No holiday um, in February. Yeah, President's Day. Who gets President's Day? Me. Oh, good job. <laughs> Uh, the so 93 Cedar Street at 8:57 p.m. Tana Douglas Conservation Commission, 29 Depot Street, uh, Douglas Mass 01516 Legal Notice for Public Meeting Request for Determination of Applicability. The Town of the Douglas Conservation Commission will hold a public meeting for Lisa Gabri on January 25th, uh, 2021 at 7 p.m in the Municipal Center, 29 Depot Street, for work to be done pursuant to the Town of Douglas Wetland Bylaw and the Wetland Protection Act, National Law 131, Section 40. The proposed request for determination of applicability work location is 93 Cedar Street, and the applicant is requesting permission to replace a failed septic system. Public participation will be via virtual means only, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18 in the Governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Douglas Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation. The public may participate in this meeting via remote participation. A website for the meeting will be provided on the conservation agenda posted on the town's website at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Copies of the plan may be examined electronically by contacting Conservation Commission. Okay, Steve. So on, on your way out of town to Webster Street, you come to take a right onto Cedar. You cross that little wooden bridge. Yep. And yep. Then you go around. First house on the right is where this project's being located. Actually, I think it's both lots. Um, I'll bring up the plan, but this is right where my cursor is. Let me let me zoom in a little. Right where, right where this area, this is where the septic's going. So the septic, I believe the septic, most of the work, the septic, the field, the replacing the septic system is all outside the jurisdiction of the commission. Um, when you see the plan, it should be a little D box, maybe a little uh, um, septic system tank and piping that goes to the house is within the jurisdiction of the commission. And the wetlands is in the back of the house over here. All within the existing lawn area. It is. Any trees coming down? Um, uh, there might be one. I got some pictures. They're not coming up too well tonight, but let me. So let me we've got two. Yeah, so we've got two wetlands. Um, the closest wetland is. Wait, only the tank and the. Just the tank is within the jurisdiction and some pipe, right? Am I reading this correctly? I think Ra Raul is here. Okay. Name it and address is. for the applicant. 
Raouf Mankanis with Alpha Omega Engineering. I'm the engineer for the project. Uh, the existing septic is actually about 20 feet from the wetland, and it's a cesspool between the house and the garage, and it's completely in the water table. The new septic will be completely outside the uh, the wetland buffer, and also all, even and the grading also will be outside the wetland buffer. The only thing we have actually in the buffer is about 70 feet away from the wetland is a septic tank. Other than that, everything is outside the jurisdiction. Uh, we we cannot move the septic any farther because of the driveway. We have to stay in the lawn area. And the wetland is surrounding the property from all the sides, uh, except the street side. It's continuous wetland all around. There are two parcels, but they are combined into one parcel right now, so we can get the septic in the right location. And we have erosion controls all around the work area, even outside the buffer zone. Okay, and the process for the cesspool? It would be abandonment. Uh, it will just pump out, uh, they will pump up the sewage and they will uh, replace it with uh, flowable sand, dry sand. Okay. Um, so no machinery is going to be near that cesspool. No. Right. The only only the pump tank will pump up the sewage and that's it. Okay. Okay. Um, board, any questions or comments on this? Okay. I say let's get um, it done um, as quick as possible. Oh yes. <laughs> My thoughts exactly. Um, Katie Grace, did you have something to say? Oh, yeah, no, just really quickly. So the owner owns both lots now. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Steve, anything else? Not, nope. Okay. I'll entertain motion for negative RDA with our typical conditions. And erosion controls as shown on the plan submitted. So moved. Motion been made. Second. Second by Mark. Roll call vote. Mark Bobbini, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Eric Harris, aye. KG Dudley, aye. Mark Munjam, aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Good luck. Okay. Next item on the agenda it is 903 public hearing 50 Southwest Main Street, North Pond Dam. Let me just. Uh, oh, you know what? I don't have this uh, legal ad. What? You don't have it? Well, I didn't download it. Not on the... I'll, I'll just, I'll take care of it, it's okay. Maybe I'll take care of it. Did you find it? Do you see it, Steve? Uh, the, the engineer is here. Do you happen to get a copy of him? Um, Chris? Yes, I believe it's on the Google Doc site. Is it on the, should I put it, is it in the, in the um, it might be in the, um, in the folder itself, not. Okay, I, I think I've got it. Um, I created a legal folder, folder. Okay, so I need the actual paper advertisement. So did you put, did you post the ad in the newspaper and the time on the what? We did, and I, I'm looking for the um, the actual. Yeah, here. 
if you could just give me the date, I'll be able to find it on uh, my public notices. You didn't see it on my public notices, Tracy? No. I don't have it in my um, file with me here. So do you know if you paid for it by any chance? Um, <laughs> I'm assuming we did. Oh, actually, I have it. Um, uh, January 25th, 2021, it's, it's minuscule, I wanted this paper here, so, um, um, that's today. Was it, was it placed today? No, I, I, I have to, let me check that. I, I just have the file in front of me and I didn't look at it. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. Take your time. I'll give you a couple minutes. Okay. Um, do you want to table this for a second? You guys didn't do the um, the fees yet either, right? Um, so Chris, if you can locate it, I can open the hearing. Um, if not, uh, I'm seeing in the Google Drive, the legal ad was the one that you filled out, but you have to submit that to the Telegram Gazette. So, um, if it's okay with you, um, Chris, I'll give you some time. Where did you go? Oh, <laughs> uh, let's pass over on this one until he comes back. And then we'll see if uh, if we can open the hearing or not. Is that okay, Steve? Did everyone get a chance to look at the video I sent at all? Or? Um, Steve? Well, I ran into Kate. Kate of the of Morse Pond. Yeah. I mean, I went yeah. there. I saw you. Oh, is that you? Yeah, I ran into you. Yeah. <laughs> How was it? Okay. Lovely. Let's let's just pass over this until we can find the um, notice. Okay, Steve. Right. Okay. You know. We'll come back to Chris. Um, all right. And then the fee schedule. You ready for that, Steve? Yeah. Are you ready? Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Let me bring it up. Hang on. What? Can you hear me? It, yeah, I'm hearing a lot of background noise right now. I don't know what it's from. Um, Town of Douglas Conservation Commission legal notice of public hearing in accordance with the Town of Douglas General Bylaw Article 8 Wetland Bylaw Section 6. The Douglas Conservation Commission is holding a public hearing for proposed changes to the local wetland bylaw fees. Public hearing will be held on Monday, January 25th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Copies of the bylaw fee changes may be examined electronically by contacting the Conservation Commission at 508-476-4000 extension 205 any person interested or wishing to be heard should appear at the time and place designated public participation will be via virtual means only pursuant to governor baker's march 12 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law general law chapter 30a section 18 and the governor march 15 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place this meeting of the Douglas Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation. The public may participate in this meeting via remote participation. 
website for the meeting will be provided on the conservation agenda posted on the town's website at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Tracy Sharkey, Chairwoman, Douglas Conservation Commission. Okay, Steve. Yeah, so um, we talked about um, the, the Douglas fee schedule, which uh, it's associated with the bylaw. The last time it was revised was uh, going on 15 years ago, back in 2006. And so I sent everyone a copy, um, just um, and I and I modified it a little bit. The and I I scratched out what was uh, existing and put in red what's being proposed. And I used the uh, town of Sutton also as a reference, just so we have like fees for for surrounding areas of, of close to what they're they're utilizing also. Um, and then when people file, um, this with the state wetlands protection act uh, filing fees is category so there's you know and i kind of re, re uh, formatted it something that kind of does the same thing to where the, the categories under a category one two and three through five kind of mirror what the state has so it used to be in the past people had some filings and they didn't know which which part of our bylaw fees it was applicable to so right now really if they file on their category one with the state they would, they would use category one with our local bylaw fees and same thing with category two which is a uh, category one is like a minor project for like a garage like 97 chestnut category two would be for a new new filing and then category three through five would be for uh, large industrial projects uh, solar farms probably would fit under there um, and anything else um, and then down below would be permanent extensions and then also uh, re, um, request for determinations of applicability. And so this is kind of keeps it more in line with today's fees, uh, time for, for staff and everything else um, as it takes to review some of these plans. Right, yeah, that's what we're trying to equal the time versus the cost um, so with these you'll be able to allocate certain number of hours towards them um, i would like to see a little bit better review of the applications before they come in front of the board so i would hope that we could get additional hours according to the category of project and also steve's ability to keep going and checking for the board on those projects so, um, board members, anybody have any questions, um, revisions, suggestions? Uh, I, I reviewed this earlier today, and um, I think I think it should have been addressed a long time ago. I'm 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 okay with it. Okay. Steve, you said this is comparable to Sutton. Is it comparable to Uxbridge, say, or Northbridge? Um, I didn't really look at this. I don't. Um, I don't know if they have a bylaw in Uxbridge to begin with. Okay. Um, they have a, they, yeah, they have that? a twenty-five foot um, really? policy setback policy. Setback, yeah. Um, I really didn't do a comparison with them. I took more of the. Um, of Sutton's and because there's I think they did theirs it looks like they did theirs uh, a couple of years ago they redid it so it was... okay I mean uh, the increases are pretty significant is what I'm seeing yeah they are but again they hadn't been addressed in a long time 15 years yeah the so ideal um, is to probably address it every few years, and so it's not such a drastic increase. Well, we can still talk about um, being reasonable, but these are, Steve would know how much time he's spending on kind of this type of project for us, for the board. Um, so as far as uh, Uxbridge goes, their fees are, they do not have a local, but their fees for an RDA is $50, notice of intent 250, 
ANRAD 250, erosion control pre-work inspection, $50. Request for permit extension, $50. Request for certificate of compliance, $50. And then riverfront top of bank fee, $3 per linear foot for each resource area. And then um, the fee shall not exceed $300 for activities associated with a single family house or $3,000 for all other activities. And their advertisement um, public hearing fee, $125. I would prefer to, um, you know, I'm not sure what the rate is exactly for the notification, like the paper, but, um, you know, maybe we can do something with that. I tried to advertise in a different location, but didn't work out. Um, then Northbridge has their own um local bylaw Let's see if i can quickly pull up the fees by the way for the record we went on this topic at 909. thank you very much um so they allow for consultant fees um imposing filing and consultant fees for northbridge and let me see um rdas for Northbridge, less than three acre lot, $100, greater than three acre lot, $150. Um, the fee for the notice of intent is 50% of the total fee, which is applied under the state NOI filing fees. Uh, For example, proposed project comes under category two, the state fees, $500. State filing fee shall be assessed a fee under the town bylaw of 250 payable to the town of Northbridge. So it's a state fee times 0.5, um, same as an ANRAD. Uh, request for extension to order of conditions, $100. And I don't see any other. Um, so they have a mathematical calculation based on the fee that the state would charge. So CD, if they're saying um, the state fee and then the town fee, and then plus another local fee is fifty percent of whatever the town, whatever the state's going to get, in addition to that, right? Okay. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I think the single family, the single family might be a touch high. Um, board, what do you think? No, I think that's completely reasonable. Okay. Um, one, um, anyone else have any opinions? Which one are you on? The I'm on a, B, B, B. B. You just mentioned uh, that, that it was extremely high. I said a touch high, uh, B, for a single family house. And I said it was extremely reasonable. You did not say that. <laughs> extremely. Um, I just want to get it being fairly shocking that they're going up by three to five times what what they oh, were whether for sure you know yeah. those numbers may be fine it just is it just you know really big jump. yeah ah. big, big jump so well, but if that's well, what it's costing us to review and to go through the process then that's what they should be i have no 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 qualms about it whatsoever 
You want me to do a matrix for what the other towns have so you can get a better justification of it? No. No. <laughs> I mean, if you want to bring the notice in category two down to eight hundred dollars, I mean, you you think Mike um, Mark that'd be more less shocking, please plausible. Those are the two categories. A and B are the ones that most people are going to file for. The A is going to be more homeowners. Yep. For and the B is going to be more developers. I might go 400 and 800. That's what I would probably prefer. Okay. okay. I can agree with that. Yeah, me too. I'll go with all of that. Four and eight. So with this increase, what about the multiplier, the one and a half per square foot? Keep that. Okay. So then you gotta fix that on page three too. Oh, on the uh... page three where the the spread and also I I personally would idiot proof that that Just, math sheet a little bit more. Right. And what about I don't the, have uh, any problems doing their homework? What about number C, Mark, the industrial? I'm fine with that. Those are big projects. I think they need to have a big fee. Um, Steve, just a typo error. Can you um, revise that 0 0.04 square feet? That's not, that looks like an O. Where? The last yeah. sentence. Yeah, it is. That looks like a copy paste error. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, the C last sentence. Here? Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's, uh, that's correct. It's four no. square foot. Yeah, but it's zero? those are the letter O. Oh, 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 I see. Okay. <laughs> um, and with this increase, Steve, this is specifically for you. I would like to see the review of the applications. However, oh. we can do that um, a little bit more. Um, you know, vet, vetting the application before it gets to the board. With, you know, a couple extra hours type of thing or something, an hour or more. That'd be absolutely right. You know, the issue where I've been running in lately is that we lost our full time administrator. So it's just all the busy work. And when, when these applications are coming in, the I, Technically, I don't get them until after they submit them. So a lot of the errors, we have to put them technically on for the public hearings. And but you're right. Um, it's just uh, trying to get that um, the the you know the plans. And sometimes it's hard to people submit what they submit, and it's hard to refuse them because you have to you have to you have to take what they have, um, even if it's you know if it's relatively complete, just to comply with the law, and then just um, but you're right with the, getting something more in writing with the comments, just so we have it in writing before the meeting. Or also the submittal checklist. Um, right. That if you don't have something on that checklist, then you can't be on the hearing. I mean, if it's an incomplete application, you do not need to accept the application. Right. Until it's deemed complete by you. We uh, have to have few other checks and balances because you're not physically there. We need somebody else to be doing that work. Or sharing my share drive. What I think I'll do is I'll start giving them my check, my blank checklist that I do ahead of time. Something I don't I, we don't have to talk about it now, but something needs to kind of um, be the pre application type of system where you know, we, we're getting applicants in on one meeting and out on one meeting. You know, all the wrinkles have been ironed out by the time the board has seen it. I think everybody's pretty used to what the board is going to be expecting generally. So these, this extra money should not only be for you at visiting the site as the active project is going on, but the before preparing for us to um, quickly and efficiently get people approved for their projects. OK. 
Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, is everybody quiet? Okay. I, we're fading fast. Anybody? Yes. Yeah. Question. How, how old are these fees that we were looking at? You know, we're changing. 15 years. 15 years. Okay. That is a while. Do we want to um, vote on adopting the revised schedule with the um, with the small revision that we had suggested, or do you want to vote on it next meeting? To vote on it tonight. I, okay. My only issue is I want to see the page three cleaned up because the math doesn't work. Yeah, that's some. Yeah, that's just the. Uh, that, go, that goes along with, the, with, we'll make the changes appropriate with whatever the cover sheet is. Okay, great. Yeah, with the revisions as needed with the cover sheet. And, you know, we can adopt it once we have a final look too. Right? Well, this is the main. Anybody this is the main document. The other one's just a calculation sheet that we it's just a supplement for us to make sure that right, they're no, doing I can it understand if, if you're saying that whatever we're approving on the cover sheet is what's going to go on page three, then I'm good with it. That's true. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. I to accept the revised bylaw fees, local bylaw fees. Yes, Mark. I said I was going to make a motion that we accept the revised bylaw fees as amended. Motion by me. Second. Second by Mike. Roll call vote. Art Martin, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Eric Harris, aye. KG Dudley, aye. Mark Munjam, aye. Okay. Thank you very much, board. Steve, we got to oh. get some more hours for the more money. Not we nice. the we got to serve the people. Okay, um, Chris, back to you. I'm here. I have to apologize. I am just looking at the um, receipt that I got from the telegram. We put the order in for this legal ad on the 15th and I guess the earliest they could get it run was the 25th is what is what my receipt says so uh but we didn't make it in and I guess we'd have to uh, continue the meeting okay um did you did it actually advertise today that's that is what the receipt says I tried to look up I tried to look it up online and I wasn't able to um there's a lot of uh, a lot of public notices on there, so I wasn't able to actually get verification. But um, the receipt I from Telegram says it was going to run today. Okay. All right. Would you be able to um, forward that to Steve once you? And I apologize. Thank you for waiting to let us know. Okay. Um, and then forward if we want to. Go out to the site. Steve's already um, sent us a, a um, video. Do you want to just generally say anything about that? Yeah. Um, is the, is the, the town. So here's more pond. And so right along this right side. I don't know if you can see the curve, but let me zoom in a little bit. Chris, I did not see it was advertised today. Sorry, Steve. Well, I just saw the commission do a site walk. I don't know. I'll just tell them how to get there. Okay. Um, if, you, if you're coming down South Street, you see over here where my, so, so where my cursor is, there's a parking area at the Grand Trunk. And we walk all the way down there for about a half a mile, 
and then you'll see right into the right, you'll see Morris Pond, and you can walk lower, right along the dam if you want, right where my cursor is. Um, take you about a half hour. Um, it's an easy walk, and that's where the project's going. It's just going to be cutting all the trees on either side of the dam. Um, and if you want to walk out there, and yeah, my video is online too. Okay, great. And we don't have an EP number yet, right? Okay. All right. No. Did you uh, electronically submit your plans to DEP? Yes. Okay. okay. All righty. And I don't see it advertised for today. So I would just, if you could forward um, a copy, um, my public notices is a good website that you can use to verify it. And if you could just send it, uh, flip it, Steve, when you see it in there, that'd be great. Sorry about that. Okay, so Steve, we'll just put that on for um, February 8th. Do you want it for February 8th? Chris, do you want it for yeah. February 8th? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Seven, eight, maybe nine meetings. Yes. Okay. I'll be there. Okay, thank you, Chris. Sure, thanks. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, board, anything else? Yeah, we return to that table's item at 928 for the record. Thank you. That was 50 Southwest Main Street. All right, anything else besides me forgetting to announce If anybody wants a walking buddy to go to Morse Pond, give me a call. I'll go with you. Hi. I'm always running to Katie Grace in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it's, it's specifically like on state land, though, not like in <laughs> private areas of forests, not in strangers' backyards. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, <laughs> Board. Anyone else have any comments, questions? Steve? No, thank you. Thank you for the, the bylaw fee. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yes, I would like to see some um, improvements. Um, and thanks everybody for coming on tonight using the different platform. This will be our um, platform, I think, from now on. So, um, the town has elected to use this type of streaming. So I would just kind of have your Google Drive open um, besides Steve showing us screen share so that we could watch the videos and stuff. I mean, mine was working just fine when I had it open on my computer. So, yeah, that's yeah, my videos or anything. It was all buggy. Right. It's weird. Yeah, the buffering. The killer <clears throat> is that I have to launch this through a browser, whereas I was able to run Zoom natively on my operating system. Yeah. Uh, well, you don't have to. You can download the app. It has an app. Well, I okay. Know, yeah, there's an app, and so there must be a desktop application. Perfect. But like for my phone, I have like this. Oh, it's an app. I I yeah. believe you. <laughs> What's the other one for, Tracy? There's a Zoom app and a Zoom client app. No, the Avea app. <laughs> what what are you looking at Zoom? Oh, Tracy, you know what? This, I'm doing it from memory. That's what? why. The, so Zoom and Zoom it. client. Two order of conditions that I sent that needs to be signed by everybody. I mean, yeah. do you want me to want me to drive those around, or you think um, I can send them right now? Electronic signatures. I can send them right now. Let me just filter through all my emails from you. <laughs> One other thing, did we go over the violation notice for 66 Cedar? 
Um, I sent that. No, why? Well, I sent it out to them. They're going to be on. I asked them to come to the next meeting, February eighth. Okay. So I, I can, I can update the commission. I just, I got a complaint over the weekend about tree clearing on sixty six Cedar. So if you're leaving the towards Webster, you take a left on the Cedar yep. on your way to Walnut Lake. And um, you passed the first two houses on the right, and then there's the first house on the right. They they cleared a bunch of pines. Some of the, some of the clearing of the trees behind the house, I think it might be outside their ju out jurisdiction, but they they seem to be encroaching towards Bad Luck Pond. So I typed up a, a violation of cease and desist. I asked Marie to um, mail it out to him today, certified mail. Okay. Can we? Do we have like a violation schedule or are we have or we have we just been using past precedent to decide what our violation fees are? Yeah, yeah to the second thing I said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I uh, I don't know how you could um kind of make something more concrete, but if you wanted to you know, think about it, say clearing within this and this. See, the, the issue is if they're not filing a permit, we would have to make a judgment call on the wetland line. Exactly. And on the scope of the impact, you know, depending on like, did they cut down a tree or did they like build a shed? Right. Or they like, cut down like 20 trees. Right. It's it's very subjective, which is why I think we've, we've chosen to use past precedent. I was personally just going to think about just starting to creep it upwards, right? Because we said, oh, past precedent set between $100 and $300, and we could just sneak it up. Like, next time it's 325 and then it's 350 uh, then, I mean, assuming that the impact continues to be substantial. I mean, if it's a minor one, then obviously not as much. I, I think the bylaw says the, it's, it sets the limit. Does it really? I'll have to check on that for you. Per, day, per, per violation, so you could technically say every tree is a violation. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I feel like the max amount is low at 300. I don't feel like the minimums, I feel like we do run into cases where it's very mm -hmm. minor and it's appropriate to. Well, the bylaw by was not in Right. Like, I don't have a problem with, with if it's a minor violation, making the number go lower. My issue is, like, we've never gone higher than $300, and I feel like there could be a case where it would be suitable to be more than $300. Depending on how egregious it was. Right, exactly. And like I said, I don't, I don't have a problem with, with going lower. It's going higher that we've never done before, and... Uh, I mean, well, like if we by law limit, it does limit it. Yeah, it's per day, I believe. Have Isn't we it never per day? A multi -day? Per I feel like us in this meeting, it would be awkward to figure out how many days the violation happened before we notice. Right. Well, and then the other thing is, I really, I've said this before, really the person that's making the complaint needs to put it in writing before Steve runs out there. That's just my opinion. Um, well, this one I got an email. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The, I mean, that's just how I like it, but. Understandable. Um, I mean, I'm like open to questions. If we suddenly slapped somebody with a $500 fine for something particularly egregious, we would have no precedent for it. Yeah. No, you're right. But then if we slapped them with a $300 fine for two days, ending up being $600, that would not be an issue somehow, right? I mean, it's just, it seems weird to me. We've never done them per day, I don't think. It's always been a flat fee. 
Right. Right. We never will do it per day either. So we should change that. In my opinion. To what? I mean, I'm going to take time to think about it, but I, I just okay, that's I think, fine. Yeah. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. You brought it up, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did bring it up. And that's I just yeah. feel like going on past precedent is insufficient and we should have something to point to when we assess fees. Nobody's okay. pushed back on us so far, but we should have something to, to point to. And if it's in a bylaw, then great. I'll look it up. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Um, anything else, board? Let's see. I uh, they're starting out on sixty four, two sixty four uh, Perry Street or U Street. So, you know, to go along with why these inspections. So I go out every week and do an inspection. So some of these projects have been getting an inspection fee from them for the next eight to ten months for me to go out. So. I asked for an eight hundred dollar inspection fee to, to pay to the town of Douglas. So if that's okay with the commission, um, we can accept that. If not, then um, it's up to the to the commission. So it's basically it would cover just uh, I do the same thing for the solar farm, and I think ninety three Davis and it might be one other project that. If I had weekly routine inspections, I was because the fees were so low before that we were charging them for my time to go out there. Yeah. I'm all for that. Yeah, me too. Ninety three Davis is moving right along. There, yeah, they've done actually a pretty, a really good job. That that yeah. retaining wall, they they took all this. I mean, I mean, I could start posting my my pictures out there, but they they took all the material off the site. I think the um, I haven't seen any any sediment or erosion control leave the site at all out there. So I haven't seen any complaints, and now it's pretty flat. So yeah, um, I took a ride out by there today. Oh, did you? Yeah, it's looking good. Yep. Okay, so I just sent out the order of conditions for Gilboa. Um, for some reason, I don't know if it went out. So if you have some trouble, I'll have to do it tomorrow. And then 184 West, too. Yeah, I, um, for some reason, something happened. So if you get something, um, I'll probably have to do it tomorrow. That's all. I sent it, but doesn't look like it's corrupt for some reason. All right, I'm feeding fast. Board, anything else? Nothing here. I'd like to say a motion. Nine forty-five. I make a motion to adjourn. Motion been made. Second. Who is that second? Mike. Uh, Mike. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, my uh mark second it all those in favor aye <laughs> aye. aye unanimous thank you guys good night